Could you believe it? In the next seven or nine years, people will land on Mars. That's what Elon Musk shared in a recent conversation with Nikolai Tangen, the CEO of Norway's Norges Bank Investment Management. If everything goes to plan afterward, SpaceX will immediately begin conducting exploitation and construction activities to lay the first bricks on the red planet. Compared to NASA's 50-plus years of effort to return humans to a planet beyond LAO Musk's seven- or nine-year number sounds great, right? In theory, yes, but a friendly reminder not to let the early excitement fool us because when looking into the whole situation, you will recognize that the reality will never be sweetie like our thought. Of course, Elon knows that, but he just doesn't want to talk much about it. Find out everything about today's episode of TechMap. So, can we get there? Well, Elon's answer is apparently yes. Our Earth is currently in the third little rock from the left of the Sun, and our goal is in the fourth rock, Mars. However, on the large scale of the solar system, Mars can be as close as 56 million kilometers away. It can also be as far as 401 million kilometers away. Even though you jump into the fastest vehicle ever like the Starship, we have to calculate exactly when Earth and Mars are closest to each other. Without it, you and your ship will lost in the infinity of space. And Earth and Mars only are in the same quadrant of the solar system roughly for six months every two years. It's only possible to really transfer efficiently from Earth to Mars, I say every six months, but really there's about there's a couple months where it's, where it's ideal every 26 months. If you can oversurpass the period of nearly 200 days floating in space to get to the destination, ultimately, what welcomes you is the dry and lifeless Mars on the horizon. And it's just the beginning. When you step down from the spacecraft, you will immediately need a specialized spacesuit to protect you from the deadly elements there. The average temperature on the red planet is around minus 60 Celsius or minus 76 Fahrenheit, and in the peak of summer at the equator of the planet Mars can reach a maximum temperature of around 20 Celsius. What's there is mostly carbon dioxide. The volume of atmospheric gas on Mars is less than 1% of what we have here on Earth. Nothing to breathe and nothing to protect us from cosmic radiation, which is bad as much as the sun sustains our life here on Earth, all of which will kill us in a few seconds. Therefore, the prerequisite is to figure out how to produce oxygen to breathe. You could extract it from the carbon dioxide with machines like NASA's MOXIE, which not only provides oxygen for human lives, but also liquid oxygen propellant for the rocket's operation. If dare to become the first Martian, you will take a chance to transform into astronaut Mark Watney in the famous Martian movie. No fertile soil on Mars to grow food in, so you'd use hydroponics to cultivate your crops in a mineral and nutrient solution. The lack of surface water means your system can only grow 20% of the food. You see Mark Watney growing potatoes in the soil of Mars using nothing but his own poop and a homemade contraption to make water from hydrogen and oxygen. In the emergency case, you will definitely come up with that idea. The supportive solution is to ship the necessary amount of frozen food from Earth to Mars and take a plant that evolved in the soil of the Earth, then just sow that into the soil from an alien world. Along with other Martians, we are not free to go outside and spend most of each day living in a pressurized inflatable building and most likely living underground. I hope you have fun with it. It makes sense because Mars's atmosphere is so thin that the radiation levels in the orbit above Mars are two and a half times higher than at the ISS. Humans can't endure too much radiation, you know. What if you want to satisfy your curiosity by going out to explore the environment of another planet? Simply wear a specialized EVA suit to compensate for the almost non-existent atmospheric pressure and block radiation. SpaceX has been developing such a spacesuit in the Polaris Dawn program, and hopefully this summer we will admire the amateur astronauts wearing it and performing their spacewalks in the Van Allen radiation belt at approximately 700 kilometers above the Earth. Nevertheless, no matter how advanced the EVA suit is designed to be, you should be careful in the face of epic dust storms covering the entire planet in some cases. Andy Weir's The Martian begins with a massive dust storm that strands fictional astronaut Mark Watney on Mars. In the scene, powerful wind rips an antenna out of a piece of equipment and destroys parts of the astronaut's camp. Mars is infamous for intense dust storms everywhere, which sometimes kick up enough dust to be seen by telescopes on Earth. 
Every year, there are some moderately big dust storms that pop up on Mars and they cover continent-sized areas and last for weeks at a time, said Michael Smith, a planetary scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. More badly, these storms would clog all your electronics. Imagine what if you were in an emergency and needed to make an urgent call to Earth, but all your electronic devices were damaged by a storm. Well, do you know what I mean? Still want to live on this planet? Perhaps we really need super brave astronauts who are pioneers on the path to conquering other planets and can't help but mention the huge importance of logistics. Elon has been planning to gear up all the necessary technology for this risky journey. What kind of new technology do we need before we'll be self-sufficient there? Actually, I think we have all the tech, we already know all the technology that's necessary for that. It just needs to, we just need to build. So no new physics is needed for this. He also referred to this matter in the April presentation. So these are all the things that would have to be developed. Sometimes people ask me, are we developing these things? I'm like, not yet, because uh, this is the cart and we need the horse first. Um, so the rocket is the horse and then this is the cart. But ultimately we'll need all these things, lots of power generation, mining in general, ice mining, propellant production, long duration life support, uh, a lot of construction and, uh, and then global communication. Although the present has not been the best time yet to enter this phase, as Elon said, at least revolutionary ideas have been drawn on paper. Additionally, the best way is to wait until the first human colonies get there to turn the planet into a place that looks like where we were born and live. At that point, ammonia ice will be imported from the other planet to heat Mars up. Then, heat will convert the dry ice at the Martian North Pole into gas. This pristine atmosphere remains difficult to breathe, but is at least enough to build atmospheric pressure. Thanks to that, you ultimately take off your spacesuit and mine water from the vast source of water ice locked beneath the surface of Mars. Due to the evaporation of water, the atmosphere would get ever thicker and thicker. The final reward is a scene of rain and snow on Mars and after a thousand years. As a result, there may be enough oxygen for life to flourish on this so-called dead planet. This journey seems very long and tough. But Elon stressed the importance of humans becoming a multi-planet species to preserve human consciousness. I think it's important for consciousness in general. So if, if we wish to ex maximize the lifespan of consciousness, then being a multi-planet species will result in a much longer existence of consciousness, consciousness than if we are on one planet. Uh, if we're on one planet, we're simply biding our time until there's eventually a calamity. It could be soon, it could be a long time, but eventually something will happen. It could be you know, global thermonuclear war. Uh, it could be simply that civilization merely subsides. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.